Well, good morning, everyone. It's Lori McGuire, and I'm here in, my gosh, beautiful Laguna Niguel. Why do I think it's a great time to buy? And, you know, so many people, I mean, we hear this from the buyers. Well, I'm going to wait until the market bottoms out. And, you know, first of all, being in the business as long as I have, and there's a lot of great realtors on this right now who have been through the real estate cycles. I've been through three downward cycles because I've been in real estate for a very long time. And I personally don't ever think we're gonna experience what we did in 2007, which like nearly wiped me out and so many other people um, because that affected everything. I mean, it was stock market, real estate market, um, that there was a lot going on during that time. There was Ponzi uh, schemes, there, you know, the SNL crisis, there was just so many craziness. And now there's, there's a lot of guidelines and, and uh, uh, there's just, it, there's no possible way. I mean, I just don't see it. And, and I read everything you could imagine on economic reports. Let's see if you can see other views here. Um, in, you know, with, in regards to real estate and I was, raised by an economist um, who worked for JPL. So uh, my, my mom is still alive, of course, but she's just retired. So I'm like a fanatic when it comes to uh, just analyzing data. I uh, do it every single morning. So do I feel we are going through um, a downward cycle right now, so it's a good time to buy? Completely. Do I feel it's a cycle that we should be concerned about as sellers and stuff? No, this is what is considered a normal cycle. We needed this because um, if we didn't have it, we've had, really we started recovering in 2012, 2013 was when the market started going up. And, uh, and now it's 2019 and there always has to be correction. And um, this is very normal. I mean, we've gone through three, or uh, this is gonna be the fourth correction. So it's gonna be my fourth downward cycle. But it's not a downward cycle that we experienced like in 2007, where we saw drops in prices of like 18%, 20% one year. And the reason why that happened is because we had such high appreciation during those years when the market was going crazy. And there was only one way to go when we had that such high appreciation, and that was to go down. So anyway, okay, my top reason why I feel it's such a great time. Okay, um, the beginning of this year, we had over 60% more inventory that hit the market in Orange County. I'm talking about my little area, Orange County. And uh, that's good news for you buyers. Uh, and nothing to be, I mean, scared about as sellers. Don't all panic and put your homes on the market right away. But if you're thinking about selling, please call me if you're in Orange County. It's, I think people listen to the news and they get nervous and, and uh, you know, some people are deciding not to wait until the springtime, which, you know, last year we thought we were gonna have a great spring market and it really wasn't in Orange County. Prices started going down. So the great news for your buyers is there's twice as much inventory this year and the interest rates are still low. Now remember that interest rates are going to go up. So we um, had four um, price increase or interest rate increases from the Fed last year. There are four. They were um, saying that there were going to be three this year, but it's more it's more anticipated to be like two this year. So it's a given the, the interest rates are going to go up above 5%, possibly to 5.25%. There may be a dip because many times when interest rates rise, they fall down just for a temporary time. That could be towards the end of the year and then they go back up again. So it's a great time. And then we're looking at the following year, 2020, as interest you know maybe a year where interest rates really start rising and when i say really start rising they're never going to go you know really high because they have to be careful about what they're doing with the economy the fed is so you have twice as much inventory but that doesn't mean that you can go off and you know start negotiating 
like 10% off the list price, sellers are becoming more realistic about their sales prices, or about their listing prices. So instead of it, what we were doing in the past, last couple of years, we were listing above the previous comparables. Now, what at least what I'm doing when I go into listing appointments, I'm recommending, hey, don't look at all those active listings. Many of them are in fantasy land because so many sellers on listing appointments, they always say, well, but my neighbor is on the market for such and such and it's the same floor plan and mine's more updated and all that. But then I say, well, look at the combined days on market. Not only have they been listed this time, they were listed before with another realtor and they've had three price adjustments. And do you want to be on the market for a year? Be like on Zillow and all these websites, you know, a property's been on the market for, you know, eight months or whatever. It doesn't necessarily mean that it's a bad property. Maybe they just started out a little too high. That's what happens. And that's why as a real estate professional, when I go into a listing appointment, I always explain the reasoning behind pricing your property correctly in the beginning. And normally, most a lot of our listings sell within the first couple weeks because we want to be compelling. I always say, if you're not selling, you're not compelling. So, uh, you know, in any kind of market, um, with you, the sellers out there looking at this, your property will sell. I can guarantee your property will sell. Uh, we're in a, a market where we have to be realistic. And there are so many sellers that I meet with and there's always something and they're emotionally tied to their homes and I see this because I was very emotionally tied to my home when I sold it when the market was dropping I had this really big home and I was like no I'm gonna keep you know I'm gonna stick to four million dollars and it like dropped by like uh, a million and a half overnight it was crazy and now I'm not even attached to it or I mean I've lived I'm living such a great life and so things get better so you have to like as soon as it goes on the market your property you have to you know make sure it's like a business transaction it's no longer your home it's a house and uh, so that was just a little tidbit for sellers uh, most important thing is to follow your agent's advice and hopefully it will be me in Orange County and we do offer free staging so we um, offer a full concierge service um, so anyway uh, so with buyers buyers it's really important that you don't oh I see this all the time that you're calling off these websites you're calling off and, I, and I'm a Zillow premier realtor so I get these calls all the time where they're there you only want to work with the list the listing agent and maybe you're thinking that you are going to get a better deal by going through the listing agent um, because maybe you'll get, you know, part of their commission or whatever. That's not how it necessarily works because first of all, the listing agent is being is working for that seller. The listing agent has a fiduciary responsibility to that seller to get them the highest price possible. So what I recommend is that you choose a realtor who's going to look out for your best interest. And obviously I hope it's me in uh, Orange County but uh, it's really important that you connect with a realtor because any one of us can pull up the same listings for you uh, and if you just go from listing agent to listing agent you know first of all how experienced is that listing agent going to be uh, some agents they may not know about you know previous situations in developments where there have been lawsuits and stuff um, that you may need to know about uh, you know, I've been selling real estate here for 32 years. I know this area like the back of my hand. I know of almost every single development has had a class action suit because <laughs> that just is the normal thing within 10 years that happens. But you need to be aware of how serious these things are and not to be overly concerned, but you need guidance through that. Um, and a very experienced realtor, not necessarily just the listing agent of a property, will know how to negotiate the best uh, transaction for you and guide you through the hurdles of the escrow. Because not only do we negotiate the price, but we're negotiating repairs. There's a lot of things that come up. I wonder if you could see my little dog still. There she is. Um, do you know? Uh, so anyway, there's a lot of things that come up during uh, escrow. So anyway, uh, bottom line is, it's a great time to buy. Oh my gosh, twice as much inventory. 
interest rates are only going to go up and you can and there's going to be a lot more inventory hitting the market you don't want to wait i mean and and just remember we're never going to have that at least i don't want to say never because whenever you say never something happens but the last downward turn and these are a lot of the millennials they saw what their parents went through and they're like i'm not going to go through that i'm going to wait <laughs> you know uh where their parents lost a lot and they're, they're saying i'm going to buy when the market is at its very lowest it's hard to time the market and you know if we do have some depreciation it might be like three percent a year it's a very little it's not going to be like 15 percent and in the meantime, you're renting or whatever, where you could be writing off your interest and your taxes and all that. That's huge. And in the meantime, you could be taking advantage of a great interest rate. Whereas when you think about every time that interest rate goes up, it lowers your buying power. So what I was able to do before, when I got into real estate, I actually sat down with every buyer. And now we're not allowed to do this, unfortunately. I can't give tax advice. but. <laughs> Back when, 30 something years ago, um, I used to sit down and I would find out what tax bracket the buyers were in. And we would figure out what their um, payments were going to be, what their interest was going to be um, over, you know, like a five year period um, on their loan. And then also what their tax write offs were going to be. And then we would take in, take in consideration what their, um, what their tax bracket is. And I could get to the bottom line of what their actual payments were going to be because we could, I would be able to show them what their write-offs were in the very end. And so many times it was like very close to what they were renting for, if not better. Um, and some people are, are renting these luxury properties and I'm like cringing because they're like paying 8,000, 15,000, I'm thinking, oh my gosh, you could, you could be owning something like this um, for the same amount with your write-offs. Well, there's a certain limit because now you can only write off interest up to, um, it's up to, I think it's, when I bought it was uh, a million, now it's 750 if I remember right. I have to keep up on all these tax laws. So anyway, um, I just really, really encourage you to, um, to give me a call if you have any questions, my team. Uh, I do extensive training every single day. We are on a conference call with my sales partners and we are just uh, rocking and rolling. We love what we do. And, uh, and thank you so much for your support. And we will be more than happy to send you as many economic reports, data to back up what we're saying.